Starting at the fundamentals of weight loss, let's quickly recap the importance of calorie balance. To lose weight, we need to eat fewer calories than we expend. In other words, we need to be in a calorie deficit over time. Our calorie balance can be altered in two ways. We can manipulate energy intake by eating more or less calories per day. We can also manipulate energy expenditure, although this is a more complex phenomenon. And this is where exercise comes into the equation. We often use exercise to increase energy expenditure as a means to induce a calorie deficit. However, exercise is not the only way that we expend energy throughout the day. Energy expenditure is thought to occur via four primary components. First is our basal metabolic rate. This refers to the energy required for essential bodily functions. This can be thought of as the amount of energy we would expend if we were to lay down for 24 hours straight without any movement at all. This has been thought to account for around 70% of our total daily energy expenditure on average. Second, we have the thermic effect of food. This refers to the slight increase in metabolic rate we see as a result of consuming, digesting, and storing food that we eat. This has been thought to account for around 10% of total daily energy expenditure for the average person. Next, we have what is referred to as NEAT, or non-exercise activity thermogenesis. This refers to energy expended from unintentional movement, such as walking around your home, head movements, hand gestures, and all other forms of subconscious movement. This has been thought to account for around 15% of total daily energy expenditure on average. And lastly, we have physical activity. This refers to intentional exercise we perform throughout the day, such as cardio, resistance training, sport, or any other planned exercise. For the average person, this has only been thought to account for around 5% of total daily energy expenditure, but it could be much greater in very physically active people. So essentially, the question is, if we perform more physical activity, how much more energy will we expend? And can this help us with our weight loss goals? Well, let's start by looking at how much energy we expend during exercise. This study provides a general table looking at how much energy we expend via various different forms of exercise. The best way to use this table is to look at the metabolic equivalent, or METS for short. This provides us with a general indicator of how much energy we expend relative to resting. So if we perform a light exercise, such as slow walking, cycling, or swimming, we would expect to burn around two to five times the amount of energy compared with resting. If we perform moderate intensity exercise, such as moderate walking, cycling, or skiing, we could expect to burn around four to nine times the amount of energy compared with rest. And if we were to perform more intense exercise, such as running or playing sport, then we could expect to burn around nine to 15 times the amount of energy compared with rest. So when we look at the amount of energy burnt while exercising, it is significantly greater than resting levels. However, we need to remember that we don't exercise all day. We only exercise for a relatively short duration across a 24 hour time course. For example, let's say we expended around 1.5 calories per minute on average over a 24 hour time frame with no exercise. This would equate to a total of 2,160 calories per day. Now, let's say we take the same person and incorporate a 45 minute moderate intensity bout of exercise, which burned around seven calories per minute. This would be a total of 315 calories for our exercise session, plus another 2,093 calories for the rest of the day. This results in a total of around 2,408 calories expended throughout the day. So even though we burnt 315 calories via exercise, we are only gaining a net increase in energy expenditure of 248 calories because even if we don't exercise, we are still expending energy at rest. While this is still quite a decent increase in energy expenditure, it probably isn't as much as we would expect based on the effort it takes to perform. So when we perform more exercise throughout the week, does this actually result in weight loss? And if so, to what extent? Well, luckily we have an abundance of research on this topic. As a general summary, this research review evaluated the body of evidence on this topic. This graph shows the general effectiveness of exercise on weight change compared with diet interventions over a 12 month time period. As we can see, exercise alone is certainly helpful to promote weight loss to some extent. However, dietary changes seem to promote greater weight loss compared with exercise. And a combination of both diet and exercise interventions seems to be the most effective. Furthermore, weight loss seems to be greater the more exercise we perform per week. 
This graph shows that those who expend more energy per week via exercise tend to experience greater weight loss compared with performing less exercise per week. So while exercise does seem to be beneficial for promoting weight loss, it probably isn't quite as effective as we may think. This may be due to, in part, the concept of energy compensation. This idea was proposed in this research review, which explored the evidence looking at energy expenditure in response to increases in physical activity levels. The authors proposed these charts, which summarize the findings of the evidence. For people who perform no or very little exercise, they tend to see an additive effect of exercise on energy expenditure. This means they burn more calories via exercise, and this directly increases total daily energy expenditure. However, when we increase exercise to higher and higher levels, we tend to see a more constrained model of energy expenditure. This means the more we exercise, the more compensation we see from other forms of energy expenditure. So exercise still helps us burn more energy, but there is less additive energy burned. So how much compensation do we experience? Well, this research review compiled evidence from multiple databases to see how much compensation we experience by performing more physical activity. On average, it was found that people tend to burn around 28% fewer calories throughout the day than what would be expected from exercise. In other words, only around 72% of the extra calories we burn via exercise actually translate into extra calories burned that day. It should also be noted that the amount of energy compensation we experience can be highly variable based on the total amount of exercise performed throughout the day, current energy balance, and current body fat. So why does this happen? Well, it is not entirely clear as to what is contributing to this compensation, but there are two proposed factors that could potentially be the cause of this. The first and probably most likely is a decrease in NEAT levels. In other words, a decrease in the amount of unintentional exercise performed throughout the day. Essentially, the more intentional exercise we perform, the less unintentional exercise we may perform. In other words, we subconsciously experience less movement from things like fidgeting, arm movements, head movements, less unnecessary walking, and any other subconscious movement. A strategy to help account for changes in NEAT can be to use step tracking as a metric. While it doesn't account for all forms of NEAT, it is a pretty good general measure. By tracking our average number of steps per day, we can see if our NEAT levels change. And if so, we can intentionally try to increase our step count to minimize energy compensation. And the other component which has been proposed to contribute to energy compensation is decreases in basal metabolic rate. This refers to a decrease in the energy we expend at rest for essential bodily functions. So for the rest of the day when we aren't exercising, we may simply be expending slightly less energy per minute due to a down-regulation of bodily functions which we don't have control over. However, this isn't really a well-established phenomenon. This is just a variable which has been hypothesized to be somewhat responsible for the energy compensation we experience. Regardless of what the exact mechanisms responsible for energy compensation are, the reality is that it does occur. So going back to our example graph here, we have our person who doesn't exercise at all, and the other person who performs one exercise session during the day. In reality, energy expenditure may actually look something like this. As we can see, during the rest of the day that we aren't exercising, we actually burn slightly less calories than we otherwise would have due to energy compensation. So at the end of the day, total daily energy expenditure is even less than what we would expect in most cases. A positive long-term benefit of exercise for weight loss is its ability to promote muscle growth. In particular, resistance training will be the best to promote the most muscle growth. For many people, increasing muscle mass is a high priority in its own right, but it may also be indirectly beneficial for those who simply want to lose weight. Increasing muscle mass via resistance training will result in a greater amount of lean tissue that we carry around on a day-to-day -day basis. Having greater lean tissue will generally cause small increases in our basal metabolic rate over time. This can increase the amount of energy we expend each day while resting. This was found in this study, which gathered energy expenditure data from over 6,000 subjects from different ages and populations. It was found that the strongest predictor of total daily energy expenditure was the amount of fat-free mass a person had. As we can see, this graph shows a pretty strong positive association between the amount of fat-free mass a person has and the total amount of energy they expend per day. This is likely because those with a greater amount of fat-free mass have a higher basal metabolic rate. 
And if we recall back to the components of energy expenditure, our basal metabolic rate accounts for the majority of energy expended per day. So by increasing muscle mass, we are able to expend more energy per day without necessarily doing more exercise. This would hypothetically be beneficial for long-term weight loss as people can expend more energy with less effort. And the last effect that exercise can have on weight loss is via hunger and satiety. We have physiological mechanisms which help us regulate how much energy we need to eat based on energy requirements. And our body gives us signals to make this apparent via the feelings of hunger and satiety. When we are hungry, it is an incentive to eat more. And when we are satiated, it is an incentive to not eat. However, these signals have been shown to be somewhat unregulated in people who perform very little exercise. So basically, people tend to feel more hungry and less satiated relative to their energy expenditure requirements if they are too sedentary. This research review explored the relationship between energy intake and physical activity. On this side of the graph, we have the non-regulated zone. This suggests that performing little to no exercise doesn't seem to downregulate hunger signals as we would expect. So these people are likely to eat higher calorie intakes without necessarily expending much energy. And on this side of the graph, we have the regulated zone. This occurs with increasing levels of exercise and causes the body to eat in accordance with their actual energy requirements. So doing more exercise burns more energy and we eat more in accordance with this increase in physical activity. This theory suggests that it is probably beneficial to at least perform a moderate amount of exercise throughout the week. This will help us eat in accordance with our actual energy requirements. This can be beneficial for weight loss as we may only feel hungry when we are truly deprived of calories and only eating when we are truly hungry. With very low exercise levels, we may feel more hunger throughout the day without actually expending much energy, increasing our likelihood of overeating. So based on this information, let's now establish some practical recommendations. Exercise is often used as a method to increase energy expenditure to promote a calorie deficit. While this is certainly true, it may not be quite as effective as we may think. To burn significant energy from exercise generally requires quite long and intensive exercise bouts. So in many cases, the time and fatigue cost of very high levels of exercise may not be worth the calories burned from it. Furthermore, the more exercise we perform, the more energy compensation that occurs. In other words, we see a downregulation in other components of energy expenditure to compensate for energy burned via exercise. Furthermore, exercise can promote greater long-term energy expenditure via increases in muscle mass. In particular, resistance training is going to be the most effective form of exercise to accomplish this. This can increase our basal metabolic rate, increasing the amount of energy we expend during rest. This may be beneficial for long-term weight management or at least help us to manage our body composition. Another benefit of exercise for weight loss is via its role in helping us to regulate our hunger and satiety signals. We at least want to perform a moderate amount of exercise throughout the week to ensure we are eating in accordance with our actual energy requirements. So overall, exercise does seem to play an important role in weight loss and for long-term weight management. However, in many cases, it may not be worth the time and fatigue it takes to substantially increase energy expenditure via excessive amounts of exercise alone. In most cases, a moderate to high level of physical activity is probably sufficient. Then the priority should be on diet to promote a calorie deficit. Without effective dietary strategies, it will be very difficult to maintain a calorie deficit via exercise alone. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Check out flowhighperformance.com for online coaching, training templates, ebooks and more.